Hello everyone and thanks for joining. Uh, just so you know, this, this session is being recorded. Uh, today's webinar is all about increasing model efficiency in model risk management. Uh, we're all familiar with the regulatory bodies, PRA, the Fed, the European Central Bank and their principles uh, for model risk management at which banks need to be compliant or face fines. But at the same time, there's an increasing demand for more models and an increased validation frequency. Uh, there's a need to accelerate model delivery while still meeting model risk management requirements. Uh, so today, David and Nikolai will walk through how Domino can help deliver models uh, with governance and increase model validation throughput by increasing and delivering improvements in the efficiency of model development and validation processes. Uh, there'll be a 10 minute presentation by David, Domino's data science evangelist, who's got an amazing track record of delivering models at scale in a variety of industries. And that will be followed by a 15 minute demonstration by Nikolai, Domino's principal data scientist in EMEA. Uh, the total running time should be about 30 minutes. Uh, we won't take the full hour today. Uh, please post questions uh, in the chat and we'll have plenty of time at the end uh, to answer all of them. Uh, so over to you, David. Thanks, Graham. Um, so our objective today is to give you a overview of model risk management and talk you through Domino data science platform as a tool that helps your framework for governance and the policies that you implement by providing you a system of record that allows you to track all of the development efforts, the artifacts and all of the management of models all the way through the development cycle into production. Um, so we'll start by doing a quick overview of model risk management and the increasing burden that uh, these regulatory standards are placing on institutions. Um, we'll talk about some of the principles of MRM and um, a checklist that you can use to put at the start of each of your projects so you're actually thinking about model risk management as an asset as you develop your model rather than something that you tag on at the end. And we'll talk about the uh, benefits of that versus say that waterfall approach where you just do the um, asset at the end. Um, after we've gone through that, I'll hand you over to Nikolai, who will give you a demonstration of the key features and capabilities um, of Domino as a system of record that helps you build a key piece in the puzzle for scalable model risk management. So I'm not going to labour the point too much on model risk because I think we're all aware that model risk is all about um, market risk and things such as our forecasts and probabilistic scenarios. Um, but it's important to note that model risk management is starting to expand out and where it's being utilized. So things like personally identifiable information and automated decision making being used in things like customer profiling and segmentation, not just in terms of forecasting asset worth and material worth, has now meant that model risk management is a little bit more um, than just your financial institutions adopting it. So we see model risk management now starting to go into organizations like telcos and other companies that have the consumer arm where um, personally identifiable information is quite important to the way that they're building their models. So the expansion of these topics is becoming quite pressing. Um, each of these models invariably present model risk. So anytime there's volatility on something like a probabilistic scenario, it's important that we understand the assumptions that were made um, the inputs and the outputs um, and that we're tracking those throughout the cycle of development so that we can ensure that the models we're developing are appropriate and fit for purpose. So there is a, a number of standards for managing model risk and here we've got SR117 but GDPR, PRA all have their own standards and most of them come back to um, effectively that we should always understand the risk of our models and quantitate that we should understand those assumptions and outputs and that the, um, the way to build this effectively is to have a management framework that's not just about model development, but it's about sound governance, it's about independent review, challenger champion testing and processes and controls that make sure the models that you're choosing are appropriate for what you're uh, seeking to do. So if you're implementing algorithms, for instance, that you don't have clear understanding of and you can't explain or interpret the results, you just have the prediction, that's quite hard to manage the risk of. So part of it comes down to choosing approaches that are valid and choosing approaches that you can actually validate now throughout that process. That becomes quite interesting when you're thinking about external bodies who do regulation and standard assessment of models because in many instances you need to educate them. So a good example there is um, gradient boosters have been used in credit scoring recently 
and they were providing really good results and they're very explainable, but the challenge was getting the um, authorities and the regulation boards to rubber stamp those, it meant that you had to educate them. So model risk management as a framework is more than just about the assets and the problem statements. It's as much about education and ensuring that what we're using as a model is appropriate and we know the ins, outs and volatility. So four key principles for MRM um, from the Prudential Regulation Authority. So these are primarily targeted at the Financial Institute, but as you can see, they actually apply to all companies across all industries. So the establishment of a stress test um, regulation standard for your models and maintaining the model inventory is number one. Um, implementing cost-effective governance, sorry, and effective governance framework policies and procedures is step two. Um, having robust model development framework and implementation process allows you to do the same steps each time that you're deploying models into the real world, um, as well as a, an appropriate stress test of these models. So independent validation teams, um, thinking about model results based on different inputs and parameters, and also what volatility might exist based on the assumptions that are made. And that all companies um, finally will undertake appropriate model validation and independent reviews. And that's to ensure that sound model performance there and that you have a greater understanding of those model uncertainties. So now let's break that down into a framework. And it's more than just the model management and model validation. Um, there's policies and governance that need to be considered. So ensuring that you've got a um, framework that reports all the way up to your chief risk officer is crucial because it needs to be managed at an enterprise level as risk and it needs to be understood and quantified on the um, risk, books, risk, risk books for the company. Um, having a model management um, inventory is also crucial. So a comprehensive model inventory should include description information, key variables and assumptions. Um, so having that information to hand anytime that you want to go in and check whether or not a model is appropriate um, throughout the life cycle of that model is there. As we deploy models into production, they should be independently assessed by a validation team, accurate and appropriate. Um, and then finally, we do a quantification of the model risk. So what are the risk factors owing to things such as data quality, um, some of the underlying assumptions we might have used, if we're utilizing new technologies or data sets um, or new techniques in the model, we need to quantify what that risk is. So that could be succession planning for the eventuation that people that understand the model might leave the business. And that's something that we might need to manage as part of that model's life cycle. Breaking that down to a checklist that we can apply at each stage of your model development process, we start with a really clear model definition template. So we want a clear understanding of the business problem and the purpose that the model has. And this is important for helping to describe and explain the model as we go through in order to ensure that any approach we take or the techniques that we use are appropriate for the problem at hand. We then go through a validation process and it's important that the team that does the validation is not the same team that develops the model. We'd expect the team that develops the model would go through peer review and code review in order to get the model performant, but the validation process should be more about these uh, risks that are going to be met and ensuring again that that model is appropriate for the problem at hand. You then move into your production process and you want to ensure that all your validation stage gates have been met before the model goes into production and that should be by the model risk management lead. Then as you put them into production, that clear registry, so your inventory of all these models, how the model is going to be deployed, any of the relevant usage and performance metrics that might want to be tracked. So things such as the um, scoring of the model and the quality score of the model, as well as the output path. So if it's an API that goes into another application, or if it's you deploying a web app that the customer uses to make a decision, then that should be uh, registered within the inventory as well. Finally, once all of those steps are done, um, go through and do model deployment. So you might include challenger champion testing as part of your validation process. Um, you might look at other things such as an ability to do uh, repeatability and reproducibility. And that's something that Domino uh, does well as Nikolai will show you a little bit later on. So we talked earlier about um, model risk management being tacked on at the end of a project. And that can be quite hazardous in terms of entire project timeline. So I'm actually being quite charitable in this slide by having a project timeline that's streamlined. Let's say we find a red flag at the independent review or uh, the regulatory approval phase. That means we have to go all the way back to project definition. If we've only caught that at the end of the model development and we've done all the work to get it ready for production, it's actually a lot of time that we're wasting there. 
So if we go to an iterative approach where we share validation with development, we have a really good way of effectively bringing the validators and the regulation standard approval into the model development process. Any of those red flags can be caught early in the piece as the data scientists are working on that model. Um, better collaboration between the data scientists and the validation team will lead to better explainability of these model results also. So that will help you build um, better education and better credibility of these models as they go through that process. And the speed to values accelerated. So we're not compromising validation. Um, what we're doing here is stitching that into our model development process. So instead at the end of a, a validation period, we're copying and pasting code into Word documents. The Word document goes to the validation team. We actually seek to bring the validation team into the platform that we are designing and developing the models in and give them tools like experiment uh, reproducibility and the ability to see all of the comments and activity that take place as a model is developed. And that's quite critical because it gives us speed to value without um, sacrificing our risk. So some of the key capabilities we have in the Domino data science platform that support MRM is a collaboration engine that is really good at tracking all of the work effort that goes into these models as they're developed. So you can see uh, things like model runs, you can see results that have been published, you can see spin up and spin down of workspaces. And what that allows you to do is comment on things like your model code or model runs um, and have that available to anyone inside the platform. So as you're sort of working through the process of solving the problem, all of the working notes and the history of what you did in order to choose the approach you chose is available and is there. So it can kind of be questioned as you're going through and doing it. Uh, reproducibility engine allows you to find, reproduce and reuse any of the past work. So this gives you some real good advantages in terms of reducing the amount of times you're reproducing the same assets. So you think about the amount of times you might have seen a risk model developed and then you're reusing elements of that, but you're having to re-engineer them. Uh, the shared context also helps in the explainability. And part of this means that you can see results track over time. So you're able to go back six months and, and see what the results were at that time and even run that code as it was six months ago uh, to make sure that things aren't going uh, differently in the data sets. And finally, a model inventory um, that is part of the process as we're developing allows you to deploy secure managed models that automatically update into a model assets portfolio that acts as a model inventory. And that allows you to control access, you can audit the usage that's taking place, and also monitor some of the model drift that might be happening, such as error rates or other factors that are there. So now I'm going to hand over to Nikolai Manchev, who's our principal data scientist, and he'll take you through a demo of these capabilities inside Domino. So I'll just uh, stop sharing my screen and allow Nikolai to share his. Thank you, David. And let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, I hope you can all see my screen now. So what you see here is the projects view of Domino. Uh, the work we do in Domino is based on projects. So they're like containers uh, that keep assets like models, uh, model documentation, uh, the code that we used for training the models, for example, Python, uh, SAS code, uh, data sets, and so on. So all these projects are automatically indexed by Domino and made searchable and, and they uh, the search also uh, respects the permissions so this is part of the functionality that enables knowledge discovery um, and i will go here click the search button i will type something like credit risk for example and then domino will go through uh, all the projects all files models compute environments um, data scientist comments that were attached to different assets and search for credit risk. And it will show me uh, all, all the projects in this specific tab that I have access to. Uh, and you can see also that some of the projects have tags like machine learning uh, or SAS and so on, which also additionally helps us uh, to classify uh, the work that is being done in the organization. So I will open this credit risk project that I will use for the demo. Uh, and what you see here on the overview page is a description of the project. It tells me that this project uh, implements a calculation of the expected loss using metrics like probability of default, uh, loss given default, and so on. Uh, and it contains code written in Python R and SAS. 
And again, that's one of the key capabilities of Domino that it doesn't enforce any proprietary tools on the users. So people in teams with mixed skills can just jump onto the platform and use the tools and languages that they feel most comfortable in. So uh, this is my project. Um, Domino is also uh, a fully open platform. We have an API that allows us to integrate with a wide range of tools. Uh, so for example, in this specific case, I have created here a Jira ticket uh, to, to monitor the progress of my model creation. And this ticket has subtasks like determination of model needs, model development, independent validation, and so on. And these follow the, uh, the model life cycle that David talked about. And you see here the two of them have already been done uh, and two are outstanding. So I can integrate, I can link my project to this Jira ticket. And again, it doesn't have to be Jira. Uh, we integrate with many other tools, for example, SAS MRM. Uh, but in this case, I'm using Jira. So I will go back to my project. I will go to the manage section and you will see that this specific Jira ticket uh, called create risk is linked to my project and Domino automatically lifts all these uh, subtasks from the ticket and creates them as goals for my project. So I have here uh, model needs, model development implementation, and so on and so on. Okay, so now I will go back to uh, my file section. I want to show you uh, the contents of the project. So here you see I've got a number of files. Uh, I've got markdown files, uh, Word documents, I've got Python, R code, SAS code, and so on. What is important here is uh, to take a look at the top. And you see that Domino automatically keeps track of all the changes that were made to the project. So it doesn't matter if I'm using something like uh, JupyterLab to edit my Python code or VS code to edit my shell script or SAS Studio uh, to edit my SAS code. Domino will automatically version all the changes for me and keep track of the changes. Uh, we can also connect to uh, external Git repos. So if you have something like this in, a, in the organization, Domino can talk to it and pull and push changes there. And we can also uh, link to other projects. And this has to do with um, the fact that we promote reusability uh, of resources and knowledge that already exists in the organization. So for example, in my project, if I want to enhance my data, maybe by connecting to an external data source, what I can do is I can go back to my search. Uh, and this time I will search for a data source and specifically I'll search for projects that have the tag template. So these are projects built by my colleagues uh, to act exactly as, as it says, as template projects. And I can use them to, to build on top. Like I can clone the project, uh, fork the project and start adding things on top. Or I can import them in my project and then get the functionality provided by these projects as well as in my own project. So if I click on this data source uh, reference project, uh, I see here that it contains templates for connecting to S3, Subhana, SQL Server, and so on. And what I can do is I can go back to my credit risk project, um, type the name here, uh, which is um, data source reference, import it, and then all the templates that were developed in this other project become part of my project. And you see here that we also have a notion for um, of releases. So by default, we import the latest release, but if I want to have some stability, uh, I can uh, specify a specific release um, for this project and that's what will be imported and, and it, will, uh, it won't change uh, for, for my project. Okay, so now I will move quickly to uh, workspaces and workspaces is where we run different tools in Domino, uh, for example, for model development. I can click here on new workspace and you see that in this specific project, I have a number of IDEs that I can spin up uh, and it doesn't have to be open source IDEs. You see that I can start instances of JupyterLab, uh, Visual Studio Code, Zeppelin, uh, RStudio, but also I can run MATLAB, I can run SAS, um, I can also run Apache Superset and so on. So whatever is configured for my project. And then after I select whatever I want to run, for example, JupyterLab, um, I can also select the hardware tier, which tells Domino how much compute resources I would like to dedicate to this instance. And, and the benefit here is that as a data scientist, I can control the amount of resources I use uh, 
uh, for each individual task that I'm working on. So if I need more compute for one thing, I don't need to change any configuration files. I don't need to uh, go through internal processes or go to IT or move files to another server. It's all automatically handled by Domino. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what the experience looks like, I will open a JupyterLab instance um, and you see here JupyterLab starting uh, and I can create Python or Julia um, notebooks. Uh, and you see here on the left hand side, the, all the files that are part of my uh, project are automatically made available to me in JupyterLab and that's the same with um, SAS Studio, R Studio, and so on. So I can uh, I can open here, for example, um, this notebook and start playing with it. And this is where we develop things in Domino. Uh, when it comes to operationalization, uh, which is the next step, we have this dedicated uh, jobs section. So I'll go quickly to jobs. And you see here that I've been running uh, a grid search for this specific model. And every time I run a search, uh, Domino automatically keeps track of this execution. So for example, if I go back to, let's say this specific execution it ha which happened uh, 10 days ago, you will see that Domino tracks a number of metrics. So for example, I know uh, the command line arguments that were passed to this specific script. I know when it was executed. I know what hardware was used. I know the compute environment. And also I know the specific revision of this compute environment. So if, um, if my, my execution, which happened seven days ago, used something like scikit 0.22, and then between back then and now someone updated scikit to a newer version, uh, Domino will keep track uh, and be aware of those changes. So if I need to rerun this specific training, it will use the version of scikit-learn which was used seven days ago. So this is automatically done for me. Uh, this is not just for Python, it, it works for, for all the tools that we, that we run in Domino. Uh, Domino also knows all the input files that were passed to this training script and also all the outputs that the script created for me. So if at certain point in time I need for, let's say, reg uh, regulatory purposes or auditing purposes, I need to recreate this training, I can just select this specific execution and tell Domino to rerun with the original version. And then Domino will spin up an instance on, this, on the original hardware tier. It will use the original computing environment with scikit-learn 0.22. It will present the files um, that were available seven days ago in the project to this script and it will execute it and then I will get completely identical results. And it doesn't have to be model training only, it can be scoring, it can be data processing and so on. Because Domino keeps track of all this metadata, uh, it is also very easy for me to compare uh, different, different executions. So for example, in this specific uh, script, if I'm interested in why uh, my accuracy dropped significantly between run 14 and 15, what I can do is I can just select these two and ask Domino to run a comparison. And then Domino will look at the source code. Uh, it will look at the execution environments, the compute versions, the hardware tier, all of it. And it will show me and highlight if there are any differences. Well, there are obviously differences in the outputs, uh, but in this specific case, what matters is if I scroll down a little bit, I will see uh, that there's been a um, a change in the source code made between the two trainings. And this is the number of splits for the cross validation. So that's why uh, the accuracy that I get is impacted. Okay, so if I go back to my uh, model training, let's say that I am happy with, um, with maybe number 14, this one which produces the highest accuracy. Uh, what I can do now is I can select this specific model training and the model that resulted from this training. And I can link this to one of my project goals. So I can click on uh, link goals and then I see the four subtasks from my JIRA ticket exposed here. So now that my model is trained, I can mark it for independent validation and I can link uh, this specific version of the model uh, to the goal. And if I go back here in the overview section uh, into manage, I will see that now a job has been added to this specific subtask and also Domino automatically created a comment with a link to this model. 
And this change will be automatically reflected in uh, JIRA as well. So if I refresh here my board and open uh, this subtask, independent validation, you will see the domino created this link. So now the model validation team knows that there is a, a model that they can start validating, they can follow the link, they can fork my project so they work uh, in a ring fence fashion so they don't expose what they're doing to the original developers and then do their validation. Once the validation is complete, I can move on to deploying my model. And in Domino, we, uh, we have a very uh, easy way, a single click deployment process where I can just say new model, uh, I can point Domino, uh, give the model a name, I can point Domino to the file that contains the model and Domino will then uh, create a container uh, with this specific version of the computing environment, the model and all the dependencies and it will deploy it and expose it as a scoring endpoint. And as part of this deployment process, Domino also automatically registers uh, the model uh, with our um, uh, assets portfolio dashboard. And this ties back to um, the model inventory that David was talking about. So here I see all the assets that I have access to, not only models, uh, model APIs, but also interactive applications that are hosted in Domino, scheduled jobs like data ingestion, model retraining, and so on. So I can look up my, uh, my specific project uh, and see uh, what, oops, credit dash risk, uh, what uh, assets are exposed for my project and that's the expected loss model. Okay, and that's the end of my demo. Um, I will briefly recap uh, the demonstration. So I showed you collaboration, how we can search uh, for projects, assets and templates and reuse them. And also how we can integrate Domino with external systems that track metadata around models. I showed you the reproducibility engine and how Domino automatically keeps track not only of source code, but also hardware tiers, computing environments, libraries, uh, input and output files, no matter what tool is being used on top. And I also showed you briefly uh, how after deploying a model, it gets automatically registered in the model inventory. And I can see statistics like how many my model, how many times my model has been used, let's say in the past 24 hours, how many versions of the model are there. And clicking on the model actually takes me to the project so I can inspect uh, the source code and the data behind the model. So this was the end of my demo and we're now moving to the Q&A session. Great, thank you David and Nikolai, that was really insightful. Uh, let's, let's go through the questions uh, in the chat then. So first question is, can we integrate PyCharm to um, I'll, I'll take this one, if that's okay. Uh, so in Domino, we can, uh, we can integrate any IDE, which is HTML based natively because we can containerize them in Docker. Uh, for desktop applications, we do have ways of running them in Domino um, in the cloud, but it's not a native HTML experience. So we tend not to recommend this. On the other hand, because Domino is a fully open platform, we have an API and a CLI tools that we can use locally on our desktops. So if I use PyCharm on my desktop machine, uh, what I can do is I can use the CLI to download one of the projects in Domino and then sync my work, pull and push changes to the project. So Domino still keeps track of all the changes and generates documentation uh, automatically and so on. Great, thank you, Nikolai. A follow-up question to that is, and Jupyter as well? Uh, yes, we can we can absolutely run Jupyter. I think uh, actually it was it was shown in my uh, workspaces new workspaces dialog. That's right. Thank you. Uh, next question is: Is all this possible with the standard Domino installation? Uh, this is this is all possible with the standard Domino installation. Uh, so out of the box, we provide compute environments that contain open source tools like um, VS Code, Jupyter, JupyterLab, RStudio, and so on and so on. Uh, we can help our clients uh, to integrate other open source tools that they like. 
or proprietary tools if they have any, but they need to procure their own licenses for the proprietary tools. And also the data scientists have the capability to, um, uh, to design their own computing environments and, and uh, configure their own computing environments so they can also integrate open source tools on their own, on their own if they want to. Great, thank you. Um, okay, next question is, one of our major challenges is ensuring like a high level of code quality and going through to you know dev validation to production how, how can that be achieved in, in domino um so so domino automatically keeps track of all the code changes and again this can be our projects can be connected to external versioning systems as well uh, but what we can do is, and we can also in Domino, abstracting the complexity of Git, provide functionality for data scientists to, to fork projects, to work independently, uh, to submit changes to the main project, um, to get to submit requests for reviews um, from the owner of the projects, which can get approved or rejected. So we have this workflow as part of Domino. Uh, we also have functionality for collaboration. So when you make a change to the source code, for example, you can tag um, people from your organization and request that they review your change. And this is automatically maintained by Domino. Again, no matter what tool you use, uh, we can rewind the tape so we can go back to all the versions of the code, uh, for the projects from them uh, and so on. So it's all fully automated and documented by the platform, no matter what tool we use on top. And again, then you can also tag your projects with different tags, like maybe uh, ready for validation, ready for deployment, and so on and so on. So uh, people can be sure that the code they're rolling into production has been reviewed and validated. So the next question is, I understand Domino features reproducibility of the code. Uh, does it also store data, like a reference to them? Uh, yes, you I can, can take that question. Uh, yeah, so Domino can store data. Um, it has two ways of doing that, is the Domino data sets, which allow you to effectively put snapshots of information and be it off of a query or off of a file that you've uploaded. Um, conversely, it can also store data like CSVs inside of its file system. Um, for other uh, connections into things like Snowflake or Teradata, where that data solution also has an ability to go back in time and review data as of that particular snapshot, that can be coded into Domino as well. So the query itself will allow you to kind of push through a point in time query rather than seeing the data into the current date. So that gives you that reference and auditability going back to the data set itself. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is, so I believe the MRM traditionally reviews the model after full development, partly to maintain independence. Agree that bringing MRM before model is deployed will be helpful. Have you seen any big banks uh, do this? Curious on any feedback regulators may have provided to any of your clients doing this. I've seen validation teams be part of the development process of models. You still have the formal check at the very end. So if there's still a, um, a document that needs to get filled in and the sign off that occurs, that step still takes place. Um, but in many of the cases around things such as, is the model appropriate? Um, do we know enough about it? Is the underlying data quality sufficient? All of those types of factors can be done as the model's being developed. Um, so the full development stage, um, you'd still require you to kind of get to that point before you can do the full sign off. But you can take um, effectively a lot of the sting out of the tail of those different assets that you need to produce by doing it as part of the development process. And then again, with the Domino um, platform being a system of record, all of those changes, all of those comments and all of that context is available. And at the very end of that, you can upload a document which might be that signed document releasing that model into the same environment that's got your model development. So 
um, you would still have that final step, which is that sign off stage. And that would um, suit what those regulators would require. Great, thanks David. Uh, I think we've got time for uh, one more question. Uh, what functionality does it have for model validation and visualization? So model validation functionality are things like the experiment manager where it lets you see um, different results as they're tracked over time. And that means that you can try different approaches to that um, same result and see those in a single place and even compare model runs. So if you had a model run that was using one approach and a model run that was comparing a, another approach, you could see the same results on the um, history window. So that gives you that capability to see um, those things. Um, as you'll see on our uh, list of upcoming webinars, there's Domino Model Monitor, which is a new product we've developed, which looks at things like data drift, model drift, and other things that happen over time. And that's uh, visualized in terms of a histogram of any of the changes that have happened to that model um, and alerts you should you need to uh, make changes or retrain the model or go back and look at some of the underlying assumptions. So that uh, functionality will come as part of Domino Model man, uh, Monitor. And then for visualization, uh, it supports the deployment of things such as Dash and Shiny apps through the web apps functionality. And of course, using things like Jupyter Lab, Jupyter or uh, VS Code, you can use uh, any of the libraries that are available for visualization in that sense too. Great, thanks David. And that's, that's a nice uh, segue uh, to, to wrapping up. Uh, apologies if we didn't get to uh, all of the questions, we'll follow up on all of them. Uh, but just to finish on thanking you for your time and thanking David and Nikolai uh, for the great presentation and demo. It'd be great if you could join us on our next uh, webinars. Uh, we have one on the 25th of June where we do a deeper dive into uh, what's new in Domino's latest release 4.2 and as David mentioned, uh, the Domino Model Monitor uh, for monitoring the health of your models. So thank you very much. Um, final thing is we're always trying to improve, uh, make content as relevant as possible. Uh, so please fill out the survey that you, you should receive shortly. It would be very much appreciated. Uh, thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.